Today I'm joined by Kermit Roosevelt, a uh, law professor at the University of Pennsylvania. He's kindly agreed to share some insights into what's next for the Supreme Court following Justice Scalia's death. So Kermit, thank you so much for agreeing to this. Thanks, I'm happy to be here. Um, firstly, how would you define Scalia's judicial philosophy? Justice Scalia had a judicial philosophy that was distinctive in, in basically two ways. When judges were interpreting statutes, he said that they should focus only on the words of the text, only on the words that the legislature had actually enacted, not on any considerations about what the legislature might have wanted or been trying to achieve, those sort of subjective factors. And when it came to interpreting the Constitution, he believed that judges should apply it as it would have been applied by the people who understood it at the time it was ratified. So he was an originalist in constitutional interpretation and a textualist in statutory interpretation. Okay. Um, I wanted to turn our focus towards some particular cases that are, that are approaching. Um, assuming that Obama approves a new Supreme Court judge, how do you think, um, how do you think the Supreme Court will rule in regard to, well, firstly, affirmative action, the Abigail Fisher case? Well, a lot depends on whether Obama can get a new justice on the court, and I think it's actually very unlikely that he'll be able to do that. There's no way to force the Senate Republicans to confirm a justice or even to hold hearings, and they said that they won't. So it seems to me that the most likely outcome in the Fisher case, and maybe in some others that we'll talk about, is the court's going to split 4-4. And if they split 4-4, that means that they affirm the decision below, so whatever the lower court did is going to stand, but they won't have a decision that makes law for the whole country the way Supreme Court decisions usually do. In the affirmative action case, that means that the University of Texas is going to win, and we won't get the new pronouncement about affirmative action that many people thought we would. This is a case where it looked like maybe the Supreme Court was now going to say race can never be used as a factor in university admissions, and now that's not going to happen. Okay, and what about uh, immigration? In the immigration case, again, it looked as though that was going to be a 5-4 conservative win. It looked as though they were likely to strike down Obama's deferred action on immigration. And that would have been a very significant victory for the conservatives on the court. Um, there again, they're not going to be able to do that. They're not going to be able to issue a decision that makes new constitutional law. Okay. And uh, how about the abortion clinic restrictions? In the abortion case, again, um, it looked as though conceivably they were going to go all the way to overturn Roe v. Wade, which is the decision that establishes a right to abortion, or more likely perhaps they were going to uphold progressively more and more restrictions on access to abortion, so that while still in theory affirming the abortion right, they were going to make it much easier for states to put obstacles in the path of women seeking abortions. Um, and once again, that's a result that you could have five conservative votes for with Justice Scalia, but you won't get five votes for without him. Um, okay, and what about climate change? Well, climate change, I think, is maybe the most significant thing because here, again, the Supreme Court looked as though they were going to take a very extreme conservative position. It looked as though they were going to basically stop the Obama administration from taking actions that are required under treaties that the United States has entered into. And if the Supreme Court prevents the United States from fulfilling its treaty obligations, certainly that's going to affect the rest of the world in their willingness to go along and, and fulfill their obligations. So this is a situation where really you could say the fate of the global effort to combat climate change was at stake. The United States Supreme Court was going to basically on its own destroy that and now it looks again as though that won't happen because there won't be those five conservative votes. Okay. Um, and just lastly, in your opinion, what's Scalia's legacy? I think Justice Scalia has a legacy that really has three components. One is his theories about interpreting statutes and interpreting the Constitution. And there he was very influential. He made his theories of textualism and originalism more respectable and more widely accepted. In terms of specific areas of law or opinions that he wrote, I think he was somewhat less influential. He did move the law a bit in terms of the rights of criminal defendants, where somewhat surprisingly he was actually quite sympathetic to criminal defendants. 
and he wrote some distinctive opinions there. On the whole, though, I don't think he was as effective as he could have been because he tended to alienate the other justices with his criticisms. He didn't form alliances as much as he could have. I think he would have been able to enact more of his substantive program if he'd been a better bridge builder. And then last, I think, a lot of the Scalia opinions were written not for justices inside the court or for the people who brought cases to the court. I think a lot of his opinions were written for law students and for the general public. And what he was saying to those people was, basically, I am the only principal justice on the Supreme Court. I'm following the law. Everyone else is making it up, and they're following their political beliefs, and they're actually fundamentally corrupt and not faithful to the Constitution. And that's a legacy that I think is actually a very negative one. I think that Justice Scalia made people think of the Supreme Court as more of a political institution than, in fact, it really is. All right. Okay, well, Kermit, thanks so much. Thanks a lot. Happy to join you.